Hi, my name is Tina. I'm head of design of Victoria Designs. And if you are watching this video, it means we have launched a new project pack. Not a regular project pack, but a mini project pack. Now, what is a mini project pack? We make so many beautiful crafting graphics in different styles and with different themes. This can be quite overwhelming, both if you're just starting out or if you have years of crafting experience. When we asked you what you were struggling with, the answer was very clear inspiration to know what to make and selection which principles to choose and combine so we sat down and solved those two problems from scratch the result is our project packs complete packs with everything that you need to make some beautiful cohesive crafting projects including a detailed and clear video tutorial we've done the thinking and selecting for you so you can focus on what matters creating our project packs are rather big and intricate, so we decided to make some smaller versions as well, our mini project packs. These are the same complete solution for your crafting problems, but these are smaller, easier and faster to complete. Try them out, we're certain you will love them. And now let me show you what our newest mini project pack is all about. So here it is, our botanical journal mini project pack. This mini pack can be used to make this very beautiful journal. It contains 21 horizontal journal pages, a few full sheet designs, four trifold pockets, four tags with pockets and three pages with some more extras. Of course, you can use this mini project pack in numerous ways, like you can do with all our journal kits, but I will show you one specific way in this tutorial. All the materials and tools that you need to make this specific journal are listed in the description of this video and in the item description in our shop, so you know exactly what you need. All sheets are offered both in letter size as in A4 size. The tutorial of this journal is made with sheets that are print border so the sizes that I use are accordingly. But don't worry if you cannot print borderless. I included a sheet with some measurements so you can adapt the design to no matter how small you printed the journal pages. In theory, you can put your print percentages at let's say 50% and you can make this really small cute version of this journal. Just in case you want to make your journal smaller or a lot smaller, I advise to keep the width of the spine as it is. And now enough talk, I'm going to show you how to make this journal. So I have here three pieces of cardboard. This is really lightweight cardboard. It is, isn't even a millimeter thick. And you can perfectly use cardboard from um, cereal boxes, etc. for this. Now for the sizes, if you would like to make a journal with the A4 size pages, these two measure 15.3 centimeters by 21.6 centimeters so make two of that and this little spine is also of course uh, 21.6 centimeters high and one and a half centimeters wide for the letter sizes that will be five and five eight of an inch by eight by three quarter of an inch twice and eight and three quarter of an inch high and five eight of an inch wide and the first thing i'm going to do is to cover these up and for the cover i chose one of the full pages and I already cut them down to size. I'm going to add some tape on the edges, a bit of glue in the center and just glue this in. Take off the backing. Using some strong glue stick in the middle and I'm going to glue it on the back here just choose a piece of paper that is about uh, half an inch wider on each side it doesn't really matter that much you're not going to see that the next step is to cut these corners but leave a little bit uh, extra paper on the corner I'm talking about um, half a millimeter like a sixteenth of an inch or a bit less, not more, but leave that, otherwise your corner is going to be bare. And then, yeah, um, by the way, these, by the way, these cover papers, I just printed them on regular, normal 80 grams paper. You can use heavier paper that's a bit more uh, difficult to work with, but it works just as fine and if you have some scrap cardboard that you use with some images on here for example from a cereal box it's better to use a bit heavier paper because it can shine through i'm also going to 
put some double sided tape here. Remove the backing and obviously these tabs are wider than my tape but you can just leave it or trim it if you like that. This. I like this. So this is the front or back of my cover. And to cover the inside up I have made an inside cover piece. And that is a little bit smaller than the outside. I choose to have an eighth of an inch gap on each side. That is about three millimeter. So these for the A4 papers are 14.7 centimeters by 21. And for the leather papers, I suggest to have five and three eighths of an inch by eight and a half inch. And again, tape on the sides and some glue in the middle to work really fast. Yeah, I would put this tape even more to the edge. Not very happy, but I <laughs> can't get it off now. So, yeah. Get as close to the edge as you can. Center it as good as possible, measure if you need to, and glue this down. So. so, and I'm going to repeat that with the other side. So I covered the front and back cover already. And this little bit is going to be my spine. And to attach this spine to these cover pieces, I'm going to use some tape. Now you can use any tape that you like. Uh, providing it sticks, of course. You can even use a paper strip instead of tape, of course, and um, add some glue or double-sided tape. But I'm going to choose this tape. This is a linen tape, so it's cloth. But you can also use like regular tape. I chose this one because it's not as wide as my usual tape. This one is, I think, one and a half inch wide, and that's almost four centimeters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this tape that is a bit more than twice the height of my book because I want to cover the inside as well. I'm going to lay this here, sticky side up, and I'm going to stick this middle piece in the center, really put it straight, very important. Mm. And then put the back cover next to it, but leave a one millimeter gap. That's about 16th of an inch. And the other one as well. Okay, yep, this is all right. Now, gonna put this piece up as straight as I can. All right. Oh, I like this tape. It's very sticky. And then I'm going to glue this part down, but going to cut off the excess first. And now we have a book cover like this, one that bends really well. And now I'm going to make three holes in this spine. And I'm first going to measure where they come. So I'm going to measure exactly half of this spine. Yeah, I'm going to go four centimeters from the bottom. That's about one and a half inch and from the top as well. Now you can choose this totally as you like best, of course. And then in the center, 21 and a half centimeters divided by two is of course course 10.8 centimeters and now I'm going to measure my crosses where I want to make my holes like this and so I have three holes 
one in the center, two on the sides, smack in the middle of this spine. To make the holes, I'm going to use my cropper dial and I'm a bit worried that this thingy will be very sticky when I get through this. You have, of course, other tools that make holes. You can use an awl instead if it's wide enough. Totally possible. Okay, hole in one. <laughs> so, I have my three holes. I chose to use one eighth of an inch eyelets. So I made one eighth of an inch holes. And yeah, you have some different settings on this cropper dial to set different types of eyelets and other stuff. But I have the settings ready for these. So I'm gonna put an eyelet through here. Yeah, found it. There, I have an eyelet in place. And yes, you see on the back that the eyelets that I have, I've had these for 20 years, I think, aren't the best quality, but they're still good enough for me. I'm going to use them. And I'm going to repeat that with the other eyelets as well. So now I have a book cover with three holes in the spine and it's time to prepare my signatures. Now, signatures are a bundle of papers put on top of each other and fold in half. I printed the journal pages back to back full size on A4 paper. If you, of course, use letter size papers, use those files instead. And I pile them on top of each other. You can, of course, change these up with a regular paper or um, other types of paper if you like. You don't have to use all of these. And I'm just going to fold these in half. I think I have like nine pages here. That's quite a lot, but I think I can get away with it. Okay, let's fold these in half. Open them up again. Then I'm going to take the cover and I'm going to place this first signature smack in the middle. Make sure you position them right and make sure you put the fold of this signature right above these holes. And then I like to clamp these into place so that they won't move. Turn them around and then I'm going to take my pencil and just make some markings through these holes. So this way the holes should be perfect. There. And then I'm going to poke the holes and for that I'm going to take something for underneath and poke all the way through I'm going to make the holes large enough because I'm going to use quite a large elastic. I am going to take a piece of elastic. You can use twine as well if you like, but I'm going to use this elastic. It's about one millimeter um, thick, I think, about a bit more than 16th of an inch. And I'm going to measure a bit more than twice from this hole to that hole, just to be sure. And an inch or four more just to have a tail. And then I'm going to take a needle, thread this elastic through, take your cover, take your first signature, take your elastic with the needle threaded on there and go from the inside out through the middle hole and through the middle hole of your cover. Like this. Thread through. Make sure to leave a tail here. If you really want to make sure, use a clip or anything. Turn around and go to either one of the side holes. Through there. Oops, <laughs> yeah, see why you need it. <laughs> now I have to start all over. Okay, so. Through the middle one, ouch. Gonna keep my thumb on this through one of the side ones back in and then go all the way to the other hole on the other side out because these holes are so large it's so easy to do this and then back in through the middle hole there you go Make sure it's tight enough, but not too tight. And make a double knot in the center. Make 
trim the tails, close the signature and go over there with your bone fold just to make sure it moves really well in this cover like this. And then I am going to do the same with the second signature and I'm going to place it right here. So I've sewn in both signatures and you see the elastics on the back, but it's quite decorative, I like it. And you can leave it as it is because we left a gap here and here between the uh, spine and the cover fronts and backs. It moves quite good and it closes quite well. But since I already have a hole here in the middle, I'm going to add another elastic to pull over it. So I'm going to open my book. I'm going to thread the ends of this piece of elastic through. It's about the uh, length of the book when opened, but I'm going to tie a knot in there so it's going to be a bit shorter so it will have some tension to close the book. This is of course purely optional. You can embellish this book further as much as you like by adding some um, decorative corners here or adding a label in front. I threaded both ends of the elastic through the needle and then I'm going to go through the middle hole outside in. Make sure you come up between both um, signatures. Get these out, remove the needle and then just make a double knot. Since I only used an eighth of an inch eyelet and there's also already some elastic uh, through this hole, a normal double knot will perfectly hold these. That's a perfect knot, it's not going to go through there. I'm gonna snip the ends off. And then this will fit perfectly over this book. If you want to make it a field journal, it will keep your book closed perfectly. And there you go, a simple botanical journal. These are the tags with pockets. You get four of these on two different pages. And this is an example of the tri-fold uh, pocket. And this piece will fit in here as well. But I'm going to show you how to do this later. I printed these on 160 grams paper, that's about 59 uh, pound paper. And uh, I think I'm going to use this one. And the first thing to do is to cut these out. And the next thing to do is to score these three lines. You can use an empty pen and a ruler or an embossing pen if you like. I'm going to use scoreboard, it's all fine. Then fold these over to the back and let's check. Oh yeah, this piece is showing a bit so I'm going to cut this off a bit more like this. So you won't see it. And then put some double-sided tape or glue on the front of these tabs. Put the glue or tape against the fold. If the tabs are a bit too wide for your tape, like is with mine, just leave it or cut it off later. It's not that big of a deal. Remove the backing. Okay. And then this comes like this. So I like to start this way. Put the tab against the fold, fold over and just tuck in those pieces. Like this. You can also punch a hole right here. And there's your tag with a pocket. You can put a little note in there or a little bit of money if it's a gift for someone. And now let me show you this trifold pocket. This is the pocket. There are four designs of these. I also printed this on 160 grams paper. And on the back, I printed one of the backs. First thing, again, 
cut everything out. Now don't cut out the middle piece because there's no ink on that to save you on ink because you won't see that part, but it is necessary so don't cut that out. Then we're going to fold these two folding lines, these two little tabs, these two lines, and these two lines. This is going to be the inside of this pocket and this is going to be the outside. And to make it, let's just fold all these lines that we just scored. go inward and the only thing we need to glue is these two little tabs so I'm gonna put a little bit of double-sided tape on them but you can easily use a little bit of glue it's just a small piece Turn it over, fold them inward, and turn this bottom part up like this. And there is your pocket, and it actually has three little pockets now. So we have one here. We also have one when it's folded here, and also one here to put some stuff stuff in. And the tag we just made fits in here beautifully. You see there's room left and you can close it like this and this and this or the other way around like this so we have a trifold pocket which holds a tag with an extra pocket lots of pockets and now you can put glue or tape on the back side and simply just place it into a journal like this. And to keep it closed, I'm going to simply use two brads. I'm gonna place them here and I can wrap a bit of twine around it. You can use those big brads if you like. They're very pretty too, but I'm just going to use these small ones and I'm going to place them in the middle. So I'm going to cut a hole about here. Put my bread through it, open the legs like this, and I make a mark where I want the other one to be, about here. And I just realized I can't reach that point with my uh, hole punch, so I'm going to use my awl. Just make a small hole, insert the brad, open these little legs. Make sure you have enough room under the head of this brad to wrap your twine around. I should really go look out for some smaller twine, this is so big. But I haven't found any smaller nice ones yet. So wrap it around, gonna make a small knot. And then just wrap the twine around like this. This is enough. Of course, if you like, you can add some circles under here also that would hold a lot more twine than I than these small ones can do right now. And now you can just attach this pocket into your journal. So you can attach it, just put some glue or some tape on the back and you can attach it on a page if you like or if you like a sturdier 
back you can attach it into the front or back cover anywhere that you like best thank you so much for watching i hope you have a lot of fun working with this mini project pack bye bye